be here on this day yes. that uh, uh, reflects, I think, uh, the overall attitude of most Americans today. And that is that we recognize that something is, is wrong in America. And uh, our uncomfortableness has caused us to rise and to stand up. But part of uh, what we do when we stand up is that we need to be educated and we need to be informed so that our activation is motivated or directed and targeted in a, in a specific way to produce the kind of results that will rescue this republic. Yes. I'm convinced we are, are facing a threatening <coughs> moment uh, and that uh, we have been asleep at the wheel and we've allowed the fox into the hen house. Woo! And the fox Amen. is not in the hen house to negotiate with the hens, <laughs> but rather to, to negotiate on a chicken salad. <laughs> and so uh, you and I are in a moment, I think, that requires of us a targeted, specific kind of move so as to push back against the forces of darkness in our country today. What we're facing today is something that just didn't happen or manifest itself overnight. But rather it has been coming at us incrementally and gradually over a, an extended period of time. I would submit to you uh, that the 19th and uh, 18th century was the seeding ground for what we are facing today. That it gave birth to a philosophy or ideas that contradicts the very founding principles to which this nation was founded upon. Woo! Yes, amen. And until we recognize that, then our movement, our effort to try to push back against this, this <clears throat> morass of evil and darkness that is looming over our nation will be for naught. We need to recognize what it is that we're fighting so that our fighting is not in vain. America, I want to give you a quote from a historical figure. Looking at America and making an assessment of the strengths of America and how one can be successful within the context of America. He said this, America is like a healthy body and its resistance is threefold. Its patriotism, its morality, and its spiritual life. If we can undermine these three areas, America will collapse from within. Joseph Stalin. Looking at America and recognizing the strength of America. It's its patriotism, its morality, and its spiritual life. I submit to you today that those three ideas have been under assault in America. Yes. And if we yes. don't respond, they will triumph in those areas. And so you and I have an obligation, yea, even a responsibility, to stand up and to be engaged. And our engagement, listen, listen to me. I, I see a lot of us moving, but I don't see a targeted movement. I see inconsistency in the movement, even in the Tea Party movement. We, we have a group in the Tea Party movement saying what they said back in Bill Clinton's time. Preach it's the economy, it. stupid. Yeah. Preach it. And they're saying the same thing today. That means we missed the lesson of what took place with Bill Clinton as he recast morality under his definition, it ain't sex. I, I hope you hear what I'm saying. But I want you to know, men and women, we need to be discerning of this moment right now. Yes. I, I'm, I'm concerned that we're not yes. seeing what God is doing. And, and, and I'm, I'm telling you, as a pastor, as a preacher, as a man of God, it is my responsibility to see things as he sees them. To know them as he has made them known. So that my movement be consistent with what he is saying and Woo! doing. Listen to me, God is saying something if you haven't, haven't been looking. I, I don't believe we're seeing it. Uh, there, there's been a push, even in this presidential election cycle, to emphasize the economy. But look what God has done over the last two or three months. 
the Ninth Circuit brought back on the stage same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. Brought it right back and put it in your face. Yes. Barack Obama is challenging now our religious liberty. Yes. Susan Coleman stood up and said no more supporting of abortion and they got beat up. Right. Abortion is back on the front page. Thank Are you seeing what God is saying to us? As we decry it's the economy, it's jobs, God is saying, no, it will not be the economy and it will not be the jobs until you get the social issues right. Yeah. I will not right. bless a yeah. yeah. And it is my hope, little women, it is my hope that you see even as God is revealing in this moment right now. And look at the media as they target Rick Santorum and beat him up about contraception. You think that's accidental or incidental? It's not. That is the result of God bringing back on the front page, on center stage, social issues. And the only Republican candidate who has been willing to talk about those social issues, whether you like him or not, has been Rick Santorum. God is bringing social issues back on the, the, the center stage. Amen. Rick Santorum is the only one talking about it. Is he God's man? Yes. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's half the crowd right there. But that's what we need to do. We need to be that kind of discerning. We need to see it as he sees it. Know it as he has made it known. And do what God wants us to do. Yes. Now, I'm here to talk about some good news and some bad news. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said that silence in the face of evil is itself evil. Yeah. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak and not to act is to act. Bad news. He was speaking to the church. The church has an obligation and responsibility to be to be the salt and light agent of the kingdom of God. Amen. Salt retards decadence or mm. decay. Salt produces thirst. Yes. Yes. Light illuminates. It casts its light on that which was formerly in the dark. And it reveals what's been lurking and hiding. Your role as the church pastors is to be the salt and light agent, the prophetic voice of God in the public square. That's your role. Amen. And the issue is have you been effective in your role? Mm -hmm. To be silent in the face of evil is itself evil. And God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak and not to act is to act. Uh, the bad news is that God will deal with his church. Somebody said that judgment starts in the household of faith. And then women, I just sat and I mentioned to Rick, I said, Rick, if we don't get it right now, it's over. It's Amen. over. This is our moment to respond. If we don't get it right now, it's over. Because what we're seeing is a metastasization of this evil. Uh -huh. It has metastasized. Yes. Yes. And it has infected and infiltrated our homes and our children. Yes. And as I look at this group today, I got one question I want to ask you. How many of you in here are empty nesters? Just raise your hand. I want to see your hands. you empty nesters. And then when I say empty nesters, you had some birds in your nest and they are now gone. They're gone. They're gone. Right. Okay. And as I look around this room, I'm saying, where are your birds? Mm -hmm. right. How come your children mall. are not here? Where are they? They need to be here. While we're yeah. screaming yes. about God bless America, yeah. yes. we need to be talking about regathering our home and reinvesting in our children and helping to change their mind because they have been the target of the progressive movement in America for over 40 years. Yes, yes. 40 years. And if the truth be told, they have them, and we don't. Right. But greater is he that is in us 
than he that is in the world. That's the good news. Our nation is facing an extraordinary challenge. One that will ultimately determine who we are as a people. Men and women, there are five issues that have been on the table in America for some time now. Those social issues that nobody wants to talk about. Abortion, euthanasia, embryonic stem cell research, human cloning, and the redefinition of marriage are five issues that are facing our nation even today. And if we don't stand up and determine how our positions are relative to those issues, we'll lose America. Amen. We'll lose America. Right. If we don't get it right on those five, it's over. And it's not about a pluralistic society. That everybody got a right to do what they want, right? You do not have a right to kill your baby. That's right. That's right. Period. That's right. In America today, in the public square, there is a titanic struggle going on. A struggle between two world views. One view is sourced in the Judeo-Christian heritage that founded this great republic. A worldview that uh, helped to frame our existence, that created what we know today as American exceptionalism. Yeah. Men and women, when you speak of American exceptionalism, you cannot speak of American exceptionalism apart from our Judeo-Christian heritage. To do so is to do violence to our history. The two ideas are inextricably linked together. You can't have one without the other. Amen. American exceptionalism is because of the Judeo-Christian heritage that made this nation great. Thank you. Amen. And any discussion that leaves that out is heresy of the worst kind. And we cannot be silent about our history and the legacy of our Christian, of the Christian influence in the 